In this video, we're going to talk about conservation of energy. First, we're going to learn the law of conservation of energy, and then we're going to solve a problem involving potential and kinetic energy. The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of a system remains constant. You may have heard this stated as energy cannot be created or destroyed. Uh, as an example, let's look at what would happen when you turn on a light bulb in your house. So when you turn that on, we get heat and light energy. And we could trace that all the way back to the beginning of where that energy came from. Now, the power plant that produced the electricity may have burned fossil fuels. And so we have chemical energy that'd be stored up here in these fossil fuels. And then further down the line, that uh, fossil fuels will be burned in a power plant to uh, produce heat, which then is going to be used to produce mechanical energy uh, to turn some turbines, which would then produce electrical energy, which then flows to your house where your light will turn on with light energy. And so this is the way that energy works is that it's converted from one form into another form. Now let's go ahead and look at an example of a problem that we might solve involving the conversion of energy. And in this example, we're going to just focus in on potential energy and kinetic energy. So in this problem, it says that a toy car has a mass of 173.4 grams, and it's at the top of a 1.2 meter tall track. It says, if the car conserves energy 100%, what is the kinetic energy at the bottom of the track and then we're going to calculate the speed of the toy car at the bottom of the track. So let's look at a diagram of what this might look like. So we have our toy car at the top of the track and it's not moving yet and so all of its energy, 100% of its energy at the top of the track would be made up of gravitational potential energy. As it moves down the track, the energy converts from potential energy into kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So moving objects are always going to have kinetic energy. Halfway down the track, if the energy is conserved 100%, now in real life that wouldn't be possible because we'd lose some energy to friction and heat and things like that as it moved. But let's assume that and we get 100% converting from the potential energy into kinetic energy. So halfway down the track, we'd have 50% gravitational potential energy and then 50% kinetic energy. Remember at the top of the track, we had 0% kinetic energy. And as the car continues to move, once it gets down to the bottom, where we now have 100% kinetic energy and 0% gravitational potential energy. And so that would be conservation of energy as it applies to potential energy, kinetic energy. Now we can go ahead and solve our problem. And so the first thing we're going to do here for part A is we're going to find what the potential energy is at the top of the track because we're going to assume that it all converts to kinetic energy at the bottom of the track. And so the equation for gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, times the height that the um, object is from the ground. One thing we have to remember is that we got to use SI units. And so in this uh, example, the mass is in grams. And so we have to convert that to kilograms first. To do that, you just divide by a thousand. And so we end up with 0.1734 uh, kilograms. And then we can plug this into our equation. So we have the mass now in the right unit. And then that lowercase g is a constant. It's the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we have the height, which is 1.20 meters. And we multiply all this together, and we end up with 2.04 joules. The unit of energy is joules. So that's our answer to part A. And then for part B, um, we're going to find the speed of the car at the bottom of the track. So remember, in part A, the GPE is also the KE, the kinetic energy. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the equation for kinetic energy, which is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. We're going to rearrange this to solve for 
velocity. So you can watch the video on kinetic energy to see how we rearrange this equation to solve for V. But I'm just going to show you what it looks like in this video. That video is linked in the description of this video. So when we rearrange it to solve for V, we get 2 times the kinetic energy over the mass, and then we take the square root of that. And so we can plug in now our kinetic energy, which we solve for in part A. So we have 2 times 2.04 joules over the mass, which is 0.1734 kilograms. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get an answer of 4.85 meters per second. And so that would be the speed of this car as it got to the bottom of the track. So in this video, we learned the law of conservation of energy, and we saw how that applied to gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. And we learned how to solve a problem involving that conversion. Thanks for watching. You can support the Science Classroom by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. You could also support us on Patreon by clicking the link in the description.